you can imagine the flood and then you can set yourself straight and then you can prepare for it and that means maybe you can stave it off but it also means that maybe even if you don't stave it off you can ride it out and that's actually the story of Noah because what happens with Noah is that he can see that things are not good and that there's a flood coming and God is maybe letting him know and it says in the story that Noah walked with God remember and that's what Adam did before he got all self-conscious about the whole thing he walked with God we'll talk about that more next time but what that would mean maybe is because Noah was straight and he put himself together and his familial relationships were good because it also says that that his antenna were working and he could see a little farther into the future than someone whose vision was completely obscured by by fog and chaos and he could tell that things were not going to go well and so he prepared for it and because he prepared for it well then things actually went pretty well for Noah even though the flood came and so that's an interesting thing because that's an that's an indeterminate issue in human existence there are floods coming you can bloody well be sure of that that's absolutely 100 percent certain some of them are going to be personal some of them are going to be familial some of them are going to be social and political and economic it's like are they going to be catastrophes for you or are you going to ride them out are you going to prepare well the first issue might be well do you have your act together well enough to see them coming with enough advance warning so that you can take proper measures maybe just to sidestep it maybe just don't go where the flood is going to be that's a simple thing but maybe you don't have that luxury right and so it is going to be a catastrophe maybe someone in your family is going to get really really sick right and maybe maybe there's just a tiny pathway through that that everything doesn't fall apart it doesn't end in divorce it doesn't end in death it doesn't end in sorrow it doesn't end in catastrophe but the margin of error is like slimmed down to virtually zero and every imperfection that you bring to that situation is going to increase the probability that that tragedy is going to turn into something indistinguishable from hell and that's coming it's coming your way absolutely certainly and so then you might think well since it's coming your way maybe the best thing to do is to put yourself together so that when it comes it can be the least amount of awful possible this is something that I constantly wonder is that if people did what they could to speak the truth and pay attention then maybe the tragedy that's part of life wouldn't have to deteriorate into the unbearable hell that doesn't have to be part of life and maybe we could actually tolerate the tragedy or maybe we could even rise above it or maybe we could even mitigate it you know because we can we do that sort of thing all the time and so it's always an open question and Eliad had put it very well are the floods the consequence of the fact that things fall apart or are the floods a consequence of the fact that people make mistakes that they know they shouldn't make and make anyways they sin right and that's to miss the mark right because that's an archery term to sin and that means maybe they don't even specify the damn target which is really you're not going to hit it unless you specify it or having specified it they just say oh to hell with it it's not that important it's like you got to be careful when you say something like to hell with it it's not that important because one of the things that might happen to you if you say to hell with it it's not that important is that you might actually end up in hell for a pretty prolonged period of time or maybe for the rem remainder of your miserable existence because it's certainly the case that people do exist there and I've seen them exist there and once you're there it's no trick it's no simple matter to get the hell out and so it might matter that the things that matter get addressed it might matter that you do what you can to walk with God like I said we'll talk more about that next time and it might be that that is how you build an ark and are protected from the flood even if the damn thing comes and the thing is it will so as I tell my students when they're young it's like look don't fool yourself you know you're gonna develop a serious illness at least one maybe two or three and one of them is likely to be chronic and if it isn't you it's gonna be someone you love it's gonna be your husband it's gonna be your parent it's gonna be your kids that's coming and so is a lot of death and, and pain and so like 
just exactly what sort of person are you going to be when that shows up? And that's the right question. It isn't how are you going to be happy in your life? It's like good luck with that. It's a stupid ambition anyways as far as I'm concerned because it's too shallow. You know, happiness, you're lucky. That comes, that comes and goes like the sun coming out from behind a cloud. If you're happy, man, more power to you. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's a, it's a gift from the cosmos to be happy. But a pursuit? No, no. The pursuit is when the damn flood comes, you want to be the person who built the ark. And that's what the story of Noah is about. And the thing is, the flood is always coming. The end of your world is at hand. And it will certainly come. And when it comes, you will be judged. Because it will be up to you to figure out what to do with the fact that your world just collapsed. And that'll be a moral problem of ultimate severity. Because it'll push you right to your limits. And you'll find out exactly where your unaddressed weaknesses lie. Because that's what happens in a crisis. And so the reason that that's an archetypal reality and it lurks underneath the entire Judeo-Christian structure, the apocalypse, the impending apocalypse, is because we always live in apocalyptic times and your world is always, in small ways and large ways, coming to an end. And so what do you do? You prepare for it. You prepare for your world to come to an end. And then maybe when the end comes, you get another world. That'd be a good deal.